We now have a new installment to the Fast Saga with Fast X, releasing over the weekend. And with that, it brings a total to 11 movies now in the Fast Saga. So, in this video, I'm going to be basically ranking all the 11 movies in this Fast Saga. Basically, I'm going to be doing it as a tier type of ranking. So, there's going to be five different tiers. So, we have five different tiers, and the tiers are going to be engine stalled, coming at the bottom, representing the bad tier. We got out of gas, basically representing the okay, kind of meh tier. We got sweet ride, representing the good tier. We got firing up the NOS, representing the great tier. And we got wins the race with representing the best tier. So, let's go ahead and get into these movies. Basically, I'm going chronological order by release date, and just basically rank these movies, put them into these tiers. We start off with the first movie, The Fast and the Furious. Now, this one I have a lot of nostalgia for. I remember watching it for the first time whenever it came out when I was a young kid. This one is a great movie to where it's just low level, grounded kind of level. You know, it was awesome and cool to see with the street racing and just, you know, just the story it was telling with uh, Brian going undercover and all that stuff. And, uh... I, have a lot, I, I like this movie a lot. Like, I still like it to this day. Still watch it. Still enjoy it. So, this one is definitely going to go into the wins the race tier. Moving on to the next one is Too Fast, Too Furious. Now, for me, this one is not necessarily one I rewatch a whole lot. Like, I rewatch it uh, once in a while, and especially when it comes to, like, binging through all the movies when I watch them before a new Fast and Furious movie comes out. This one, to me, feels like sort of a generic sequel of sorts. I still like it. I still kind of enjoy it and stuff, but it does feel like it's more of a generic sequel. The villain is not really compelling or anything kind of forgettable a little bit and um i mean i like roman I like his introduction into the series with this movie but um it just lacks a little something that wasn't that wasn't here like it was in the first one so for this one i'm just going to have to put it into the sweet right tier for a good tier moving on to the fast and the furious tokyo drift the third part now a lot, i know a lot of people do not necessarily like this one but i gotta say i am a this one's kind of a guilty pleasure for me i gotta say uh, to where I like the whole Japanese setting. I like the things it does with the whole drifting and street racing going on. And, you know, I know we I know we don't get necessarily the characters that we get from, like, the first two movies. But I like the way that it brings us this kind of new setting to Japan. Introduce, basically introduces us to, first appearance in the saga at least, to Han and bringing in uh, some other characters. And, I, like I said, the whole street racing with the drifting and all that. I like that. I like the music that's in here where it's Japanese inspired. Um, so... I have a guilty so a pleasure soft spot for this one. So this one is going to be going into the Sweet Ride tier. Next up is going to be the fourth installment, Fast and the Furious. Not sure why they called it that, but no less. We got Fast and the Furious, the fourth installment to the franchise. And this one is honestly good. I like this. I like some of the stories telling us um, kind of getting back to uh, some of the roots of bringing all the characters back together again from the first and second movies, at least. Bringing these characters back again. And um, just telling the story of... Just, you know, Brian and Dom kind of, uh, you know, reigniting that um, that rivalry between them and then, you know, eventually becoming more like friends and then eventually family in other movies. And I just think that this one has good things. Kind of some things are forgettable about this movie, but I still enjoy this movie. So the thing has some good qualities to it. So I got to put it into the sweet right tier. Next up, we get to Fast Five, basically the one that everybody says is the best in the franchise. And I agree with them. This one is definitely the top tier best of the best in the franchise we get a great antagonist with the rock coming out in this movie you get a lot of great action some of the best action in all of the franchise and um just overall awesome great action movie like everything it was setting up and sets up some stuff for the future too so of course i got to put this into the wins the race tier next up we got fast and the furious six now when it comes to these this middle part where it's like five six and seven i think this is the high point of the fast saga overall after that kind of declines a little bit for me but with fast fast and furious six i think it brought it brought the action gave us a great villain with luke evans and just a lot of great things about this movie honestly a lot of great things i still like this movie still enjoy it like i said i think this is the part of the fast saga where it's like a high point in the fast saga with all the great action and actually has a great villain and we get some great story going on with this movie so this one i got probably put into the wins the race tier moving on to fast and the furious seven uh when it comes to this movie like i said this is a high point this is this is the high point but this one is probably the last one and the hot sort of high points of the fast saga i believe this movie had a great uh, story to tell well somewhat great story to tell i think the thing that holds it back for me and it doesn't hold it back a lot because this is still a great movie we get a great villain with jason statham and uh, a lot of great uh action going on in this one the one that holds it back just slightly a little bit but still 
sort of a, it's still a great movie i believe um where we get jason Stamp as the villain of this movie but you know basically taking revenge out on dom and the family and for his brother and all that but the thing that holds it back just a little bit for me is that it basically throughout the middle of the movie the second act of the movie basically takes a detour from jason Statham, Statham a little bit and basically goes on this mission to recover a missing missing you know the missing god's eye and basically puts jason Statham kind of in the back seat of this whole during this whole second act we get like another side villain in the way too and this whole just mission of trying to recover god's eye that kind of holds it back a little bit for me but nonetheless it's still a great movie i still believe it's a great movie and i think that it does a lot of good things with this one and when it comes to fast and the furious 7 i think this one this movie is the best probably would have been the best point to end this franchise that i was saying i wanted to wanted it to end but if they were to end it at this movie it's the movie that has the complete book ending to the franchise i believe so if they wanted to end it at this movie which i think it's very possible they could end it at this movie um it would have been it would have been i think it would have been a satisfying ending i'm gonna to have to say that this one is going to go into the fire up the nos tier Moving on to Fast and the Furious 8, Fate of the Furious. Now, this is where it starts getting to the low point for me for the Fast Saga. Not that this movie's bad or anything like that, but this movie definitely did not overwhelm me or anything like that. It wasn't underwhelming either. It was just, just down the middle for me. I think it has an interesting concept to making Dom the sort of antagonist of the movie to where the rest of the team has to go up against them. It sounds good on paper, but with the execution of it, I don't think they fully execute it very well like it, it's good but it's not as great as it could have been to me so it and it just gets into the low point this is kind of this movie starts off as the low point for me when it comes to the fast saga and cypher's a good villain i think cypher is a very good villain to where she's basically getting dom bribing him in a way to holding his kid hostage and all that and you know making him go get making him go against the team the team go against him and all that stuff and it, it's, in, it's a very interesting concept but it wasn't fully executed to the way it could have been to where it could have been great in this movie. But nonetheless, I still kind of like this movie. I still think it's kind of okay and good. But it's definitely a low point for me when it comes to the Fast Saga. So I got to put this one in the out of gas tier. Next up, we get to Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. This one is a fun blast of a movie uh the rock and jason stadium have such great chemistry and banter with each other always funny to see them on screen together going back and forth and it's it's an awesome movie like i said it's an awesome movie and it, it when it comes down to it it's a great one in the fast saga and like i said the rock and jason stadium really make this movie to where their chemistry is on point their banter Everything they do is funny moments. This one has a lot of cameos, which is funny to see. Uh, has a very interesting villain with Bricks and Idris Elba coming out in here. Uh, we get introduced to um, Deckard Shaw's sister, which is a nice addition in the movie also. Uh, so this one has a lot of fun to it. Um, a lot of great action going on to it. And, you know, actually a pretty good story too. So I got to put this one into the Fire Up the Nos tier. Moving on to Fast and the Furious 9, or F9, how they want to call it. Like I said, Fast and Furious 8 is a low point when it comes to this one. This one is continuing being that low point of the Fast Saga. I think that this one is the weakest of, out of all of the movies in the Fast Saga. This is the one I probably rewatched the least amount of. I think I've only seen it like three times since it's been out. Like once in theaters, once it, once it came out of theaters. And then, of course, once recently in preparation for Fast X. That's the only times I've ever watched it. This is, this is one I don't typically go back to. I don't think it's... Like I said, it's the low point of the Fast Saga. I don't think it has too much of a good story with the whole Jacob coming in, uh, storyline coming in. It's like this this franchise, this saga is all about family, but you're going to leave out an important part of that family to where your brother is. You never mentioned you, you having a brother all this time. And I get like you basically pushed him away and all that stuff, but it's like really no mention of a brother at all or anything like that. I don't know. It's just a weird thing that went on with this one. Um john cena did what he can with the role but i don't really buy it or believe it as this great villain or anything like that and um cypher's basically put off to the sideline too so it's like i don't know i don't know i don't really rewatch this movie a whole lot like i said it's definitely one of the lowest points probably the weakest out of the fast saga but um i still it's still okay it's still okay so but i do definitely have to put this one in the out of gas tier and we get to the newly released fast x fast and furious 10 newest installment to the fast saga i like a lot of things they did with this movie i think this movie is sort of a return to form when it comes to um 
some of the other movies, especially after Fast and Furious 8 and Fast and Furious 9. This one is definitely a more return to form kind of style. I kind of see what people are saying where this one feels like it's the Infinity Saga kind of movie to the Fast Saga. I'm not saying that it's as good as Infinity War, but I can see how they say this one, the way it's set up, the way it plays out, is definitely the Infinity War type movie to the Fast Saga to where it's we have this events that transpire and the way it leads off on a sort of cliffhanger pretty much to where we have to wait to the next installment to get a conclusion and all that stuff uh it'll be interesting to see if they actually do a third movie they didn't really confirm that there's going to be a third movie but you know they hinted at a third movie so it'll be interesting if they actually turn this two part into a trilogy uh be interesting to see if they do that if they can actually somehow extend the story going on to a trilogy instead of just two parts it'll be interesting to see that when it comes to Fast X, I think Jason Momoa really is the standout of this movie. He is probably one of the best villains in the Fast Saga. Um, so every time he's on screen, it's just a fun time seeing him on screen. He brings his charisma and charm and just the way he plays this villain as just psychotic and just overall just stealing the scene, stealing each scene that he's in. It's like Jason Momoa basically was the high point of this movie. It shows in this movie that he was like having fun. He knew what he was doing in this role and he knew what kind of movie he was in. So Jason Momoa is definitely one of the high points in this one. There's a lot of great action in this movie. Um, so like I said, it's definitely like a return to form when it comes to some of the fast movies. Uh, so this one I got to go ahead and put into the sweet ride tier. Um, I think it's a great setup movie to where we could get some other stuff in the future. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I think it was... Um, it was a good movie. I wasn't. I wouldn't say I'm overwhelmed by it, but I wasn't underwhelmed either. I was a little bit. If there was a level between overwhelmed and just whelmed, I'd be like right there in that middle part of the, between those two. Um, I think, like I said, this was a good movie. Had a, a great action in it, and Jason Momoa is a scene stealer in this movie. So I gotta say, this one is definitely a good movie. So I gotta put it at that tier. So that is the tiers. Uh, that is the how I will rank the movies in tier list form. If you want to do a Oh, quick old-fashioned rating when it comes to ranking these from bottom to the top coming at the bottom is fast and furious 9 then next up is going to be fast and furious 8 and next up is going to be too fast too furious and after that is going to be fast and furious 4 the next up is going to be tokyo drift then fast x then hobbs and shaw then fast and furious 7 then up fast and furious 6 then we got the original fast and the furious and then we got fast 5 coming in that's a top, coming in at the top so that is how I will rank all the movies from the bottom to the top. And that is how I rank them in tier list form. Let me know down in the comments below how would you rank these movies. But that will do all for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Remember, if you want to be part of Team Legendary, all you do is subscribe and turn notifications on. So you know I post another video. Hope you all have an awesome day. And remember, be legendary.